In this video, we're going to look at the five most common questions that are asked in interviews for cleaners. And I'm going to help you plan fantastic answers that will land you the job. So the first question that is basically guaranteed to come up in all of these interviews is a simple one, which is what hours can you work? And although this question is simple, people tend to do it really, really badly. So I'm going to show you some simple tips that are going to make you successful in this question. The first thing is you're going to have to be honest. There's no point getting the job and then not being able to work the hours that are required. So for cleaning jobs, if you cannot ever work early in the morning and you can never work evenings, then probably this career and this um, company is not suitable for you. So there's no point getting the job. Once you've got over that point, you want to show off as much flexibility as you can and you want to come across that you're actually committed to the job. So if you start talking about all the times you can't do, that um, causes problems for the company. So you're not really committed to the job and you're unable to be flexible. So it's better to give the job to someone else. This is a make and break interview question. So some great things to mention if you can work evenings. That is really important in cleaning because nobody wants you to be cleaning an office while people are working in it. Weekends as well. Some companies do deep cleaning through the weekend. So being able to work there is very helpful. Talk about how you can work round commitments rather than explaining why everything else in your life is getting in the way of your job, which is a typical mistake made on this question. If you can work school holidays, that's a really great thing to mention because a lot of people can't. So if you could say, I can work the times that a lot of people can't work, that's putting you at an edge. If you can't work the school holidays, it's best just not to mention them at all. And whenever you're talking about when you can't do it, if you're pushed to, you want to talk about, you know, I prefer this, but I can and show off as much flexibility as you possibly can. To be successful in this, you've got to be positive and have a really can-do attitude. That's showing the flexibility and commitment that they are going to be marking you on when they're assessing this question. So focus on what you can do and you will be successful in this question. The second question, why did you leave your last job? And this question, you know, hits people when it's asked and is often done extremely poorly. So there's some positive things and there's some negative things. You want to focus your efforts in answering this question all on the positives. So pick one out of that list and really focus on it. So you want to be leaving your last employer by choice. You don't want to have been forced out. If you have, it's best not to talk about that in great detail. You want to be focusing as much as you possibly can on the good reasons for leaving. So, you know, family reasons, perhaps your partner got a new job in this area and you're relocating there. That's a perfectly valid reason to be moving. Um, if you're applying for a cleaning supervisor role, that progression is a perfectly reasonable reason to be moving. If you're working for a particular employer that has a certain work pattern that's that's a problem for you, but the new employer that you're coming to has a working pattern that perfectly fits in with your needs and you have that kind of mutual agreement around the work pattern that suits both of you, that's great. Corporate restructure, so if a company is closed in office or downsized, that's another great reason for leave, for leaving because it's involuntary and it doesn't reflect on you. If you go down the negativity route, you're going to fail this question. So a classic problem in answering this question is people will talk about conflict with co-workers who didn't get on with someone. They'll talk about disagreeing with management or not liking the company or they'll just basically say lots of negative things about their previous employer. And if you're on the other side of the interview, you're thinking, I don't want to employ this person because the second they don't like something, they're going to leave and go to another employer and tell them how awful I am. So it's just a risk that you don't want to take. You don't want to employ people who are negative and who will go into an interview and attack their previous employer. That is the worst thing you can do in this question. So focus as far as you possibly can on good reasons for leaving and good reasons for moving on. And just do not, under any circumstances, say anything negative about your previous company because that reflects badly on you. Let's move on to question three. Tell me about yourself. Usually badly answered because you've not planned it. There will very likely be a point in the interview where they just say, give me some information about you. And to do this, you want to go through what I call kind of the three pillars of a really good answer to this question. You start by talking about your experience and the employer is definitely going to want to know about your last job. So it's much better to bring this up when you're in control of the conversation than when they're in control of the conversation because you can shape the narrative around that. You want to focus on any relative 
relevant work experience, absolutely anything. You have to make it relevant. So if you worked in customer service, that is relevant to a cleaning job because you may interact with customers or other staff and you'll have gained loads of useful skills from that. So you can really show that off. If you have any qualifications at all, it is really great practice to mention those and even have the certificates with you so you can back that up. Some personal attributes. So when you're in cleaning, you want to show that you have high standards and just literally saying, I have very high standards. I expect places to be very clean and I insist that my work is done to a very high standard. Talk about times where you've went the extra mile, where you've helped out others, where you've done maybe a little bit of overtime without perhaps getting paid, but you just stayed that 10 minutes to make sure the job is done perfectly. And talk about the fact that you like working in teams and that you've previously worked in teams and they have a very positive impression. If you've got a good reference, you, you've got this opportunity in the interview to highlight that reference and say, as you've heard, my previous employer said this about me. So this is you know, why I'm a good person for the job. And lastly, you're also in control of this part of the conversation. So you can use this opportunity to share your motivations rather than have them quiz you on the motivations. So why did you apply for this job? What is great about this job? You can really show why you want this job and why it's suitable. Why this particular company? Why do you want to work here? You have to have an answer for that prepared. And what's your future plan? So are you looking to take a supervisory role up in the next five years and you see this company as a, as a good launching board for that? That's another great thing to to get in. So take the advantage in this question to be in control of the conversation and give them a really great reason to employ you. So get all those three pillars in and they will be impressed with the answer that you give. Fourth question, if you found a personal item of value that had been left, what would you do? So as a cleaner, you're going to be there perhaps when there's very few people around and people have left to go home. And so quite commonly, people leave items of value. I've heard about people leaving Rolexes, for example, when they're very high up in companies, it's, it's happened before. And so you have to show that you're you know trustworthy and you know what you're going to do in this situation. So the first thing you're going to mention, and it's a really great keyword, is safeguard the item. So you've identified something of value that's been left. Of course, leaving it out on the side is not an appropriate place or leaving it on a desk. So you're going to make sure that item is safe. Your first priority is taking care of that item. The next step is you're going to report it. You don't want to be the only person that is aware that there is a high value item or not necessarily just high value, just an item that belongs to someone else that could potentially be stolen. So you want to make sure that various people know that's for your own benefit and for everyone else's benefit so that it's known amongst the company that this item has been lost. And so it also comes into the safeguarding it. And then just say you're going to follow the company's procedures because you're coming into this company. You don't know exactly what the procedures is. Is there a safe in, in the reception that it goes into? That could be one of the policies. So you're going to find out what is the official policy on this and whatever it is, that is what you're going to do. So a lot of people answer this question by saying, I would do these things, which may be contrary to exactly what the company says. So you're going to always follow the company's procedures and you're going to consult with a manager if you're unsure. Let's go on to the last question. Tell me about a time you went the extra mile for your company. And this is a simple question as long as you've got some experience. And so I've given you some suggestions of things that you could use as an example. You could talk about, you know, fixing a big problem. One fabulous example I heard was from uh, Wynn Resorts, which was highlighted by the chief executive of the company. Someone had forgotten their medication and were very upset about that. And one of the staff members um, simply said, oh, my brother lives, lives in that city. And his brother went and collected it and had it couriered across to the person. So they were able to enjoy their holiday because they didn't have to go back home. So that's a really fabulous example of going the extra mile. So if you've fixed any problem for a customer or another staff member, if you've reunited someone with lost property, if someone's lost in the building and you've went, can I help you? And they've said, I don't know where this is. And you've said, let me take you. And you've taken them right down to that place. That is the sort of person that these companies want to employ someone who actually sees a problem and actively goes and fixes it. If you've stayed behind maybe five, 10 minutes because the job wasn't completely done or something else came up, so someone was terribly lost and you took five minutes to go show them but didn't get time to finish your cleaning, so you came back and you finished that. So you 
went, put, you basically put yourself out there. And that is what you're trying to demonstrate. And also some good examples about resolving conflict where you are a calming influence is also a really good example to use. And lastly, I'm going to leave you with some questions to ask. So at the end of the interview, if you don't have any questions and you just say, I've got nothing to ask, that is a big red flag and very negative. So I'll let you work through the questions that are here. A lot of these questions are um, applicable to pretty much every job. So try and particularize them to cleaning um, more specifically. And lastly, the most important thing to do is to ask one question that is directly related to something that has come up in the interview. So all these questions can be asked ideally make them specific to your company and what has also come up in the interview and then you'll be really successful on this. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have the best of luck in your cleaning interview and thank you very much.